that to another level altogether and showed us that the stuff that we play with, which we play as a hobby, actually has real world capability. Now, um, I'll let Murli and Mali talk a little bit about what they're doing, how they've done it. Um, all I can say is that it's, it's phenomenally interesting to see that, that this little thing actually can be used in more ways than we can think of. Right? So, um, why don't you, so they, the company is called M2M Digital. M2M Digital. I already had an M2M Digital. Sorry, M2M Digital. Um, I'll, I'll leave you guys to explain a little bit of what you guys do. Yeah. Cool. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Mali. Hi. So, uh, yeah, we, we are a startup but focus on primarily on industrial IoT. I'm not sure how many of you really understand industrial IoT, but you know, most of you would have been doing these projects around home automation. Right? So Arduino, Raspberry Pi, traditionally use it around home automation. What we've done is we've extended it to industrial IoT. Uh, so just as a background, uh, engineering and MBA, engineering and MBA, but what was that, you know, he went to uh, run his father's company, which was primarily in manufacturing space. Uh, so this requires, what we're doing requires a lot of domain knowledge, you know, you need to have a good understanding of manufacturing processes to actually, you know, implement these kind of uh, you know, solutions on the ground. Uh, so uh, what we are doing is we are actually working with uh, small and medium enterprises where we track their productivity. Uh, we track their machine utilization, we track their machine, you know, stoppages. Say it's like this, you buy a computer or you buy, you know, a car or you buy a, you know, a motorbike, right? Now, how many of you actually track the return on investment on whatever you bought? Now, how many times have you been using it? What is your return on investment? So, similarly for a company, the purpose of the company exists is, you know, they have to make money for their shareholders, right? So you buy an investment, uh, you buy an equipment or a machine. They need to track what is the you know, utilization. You know, am I making money on the you know, uh, machine on a daily basis, an hourly basis? So that is the level of analysis that we are doing. So we basically started off with Arduino. So we've got our first version of the kit, which is Arduino based. So Raspberry Pi and Arduino, and because it is Arduino day, we you know, got the Arduino version. Uh, we've now moved on from Arduino to uh, PIC processor. So that's the next level of you know. Uh, it's a gradual graduation, no? uh, or, no? systematic graduation. Uh, so that is where we are today. So the black box over there you see is, uh, no, it's got the uh, uh, device. You can come and see it after this. Before that, you know, I'll show you what industrial IoT application we are going to you know, uh, focus on. <laughs> so these are some of the machines where the... These are the machines for thousand LS. We manufacture the uh, uh, components for you know, uh, to make all the ancillary parts. This is where the solution what you see here is placed. But you know, in industrial environment, you know, it's like the environments are really, really tough. When I say tough, it means heavy amount of dust, pollution, noise. Noise is like 90 decibels on an average. You know, most of the components will not be able to you know, uh, withstand the vibrations. So they're actually, you know, in a matter of few minutes or you know, hours, you know, it will come out. So that is the, you know, that's why you know, home automation versus industrial IoT is a completely different ballgame. And uh, that's the reason why you know, many of them don't focus on industrial IoT because it's really, really tough. When I say tough, it's really back-breaking, you know. Uh, your number of trials you have to do to, you know, uh, provide a warranty for a product is really, really, you know, it takes a lot of, lot amount of, you know, hard work in terms of getting, you know, the trials, monitoring it on a daily basis. Now, you may not understand it now, but once you start your, uh, you know, uh, implementing those, whatever you've done, you'll start realizing it on an industrial scenario. Uh, I'll let Murli explain the application to you. What we'll do, this is actually a, a touch screen monitor. This is the monitor that is actually there next to the uh, machine panel where the operator is going to use. 
So the application, what we've done is where you know uh, a machine operator will use it, and this will be then monitored by the shift supervisor. Uh, so basically, it's a you know bottom-up approach in terms of analysis. So we'll also show you some analysis, and then you know, we'll take it forward. Hi. Uh, okay. This is the Let me screen. briefly explain the hardwares that are used first, and then uh, how the process flow happens. Then let's get into the actual data flow. Okay, the hardware, uh, what we are using for demo right now, it's a proximity index. This is an industrial grade proximity sensor. Uh, this will detect any metal which is within the range of 8 mm. You have various industrial grade proximity sensors. This is one hardware which we are using. Uh, you have capacitive uh, to detect plastics and then to uh, detect non metals, that is like uh, powdery stuff and all that. They have different sensors for this. This what we are using is industrial grade inductive proximity sensor. Okay. This is one hardware and uh, we have used, uh, obviously you need to know the wiring for this. This is very 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 critical. In any circuit, ground and power source is extremely critical. Where to connect and where not to connect you should know otherwise you will burn up your circuit. Uh, uh, one more thing. The sensor works on 12 volts, Arduino works on 5 volts. So, you need to know how to Yeah, work. okay. Since it has explained that now, this is powering the sensor, not the Arduino. This is powering the sensor. Okay. And we have made our own circuit board. This can basically accommodate a digital signal, an analog signal, any sensor and uh, a LCD display is also provided and uh, this we are fitting on top of your any Arduino. regular Arduino board. And Arduino is connected to Raspberry Pi. Uh, why we are using Raspberry Pi is uh, our objective is we are looking at SMEs, when we say SMEs, uh, they are into manufacturing fields, they have a lot of missionaries and mind you these missionaries are devoid of any electronics, devoid of any electronics which means no PLC, no NCs, no CNCs because if these things are there then it's just pulling out the data. What we are doing is we are creating data and then we are pulling it. So when we say we are creating data as and when an event is happening, we are recording it. What is the event? A component is produced. That's it. So we are capturing what is meant by producing a component. So this is not where when we look at a machine, we will know if a component physically falls down. But for a sensor to know that, like we need to arrive at which sensor to be selected here. We have used a proximity sensor wherein we are tracking certain motion of certain parts on the machinery. So based on that we say yes this component is produced. Okay. Now there are a lot of other challenges also. Just because the part in the machinery moves doesn't mean a component is produced. We need to understand which part moves and at what rate it is moving to generate that. So which means uh, you have to play around with your timing frequency in which the data is captured. So once all these are all understood then we understand what is meant by production. Now once this production is collected, we push it into the Raspberry Pi. How this is happening is we use the serial for UART cable of your uh, Arduino which is synced up with the uh, serial port of the Raspberry Pi. This is used for powering up the Arduino also. Though we say Raspberry Pi 3.3 volts, it has a 5 volt uh, pin also. So this is used for powering up the uh, Arduino, sensor powering up is this. So we are using three, another four major hardwares. One is the sensor, the other is, okay, five, five, the other is our circuit board. Next is the uh, Arduino board itself and then next is the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now all these, why still we are using Raspberry Pi is like, assume a factory having like uh, in a bay, there are 50 machines. Just imagine them to be computers, a dumb computer's nodes. So you can connect two or three sensors to one Raspberry Pi. 
So which means all these three machines, we are looking at a land of machineries in the shop floor. So which is accessible to you. Once data is collected, it's then up to the user's hand how they want to see it. So it is like uh, you can sitting at home, you can monitor whether the machine is running or not running. Or if there is some customer urgency, you can immediately find out like which machine is running out of stock and where I can plan my changeover. If you want, we are incidentally linking it up with something called as TPM. So here what we are actually doing is, the data that is uh, coming out, uh, okay, probably will show some live data that is happening. Uh, Excellent. Cool. <coughs> Okay, you can see that number 1,2,3,1 moving. This is a proximity sensor which detects metal. So this is a metal screwdriver. So you can see that number 1,2,3,1 changing. It's in still uh, change. Uh, we have kept a refresh rate of 5 seconds. Okay, so here how we are linking. This data being there, it is fine and nice. It is no different from a counter on a machinery which is worth not more than 4,000, 5,000 bucks. So in what way are we going to be different from there? So here we are using the real application of IoT. One is like we automate the log sheet. At the end of the shift, each machine, somebody has to sit and write on a paper who has produced, on what machine they have produced, how much they have produced, against what work order or what all these jargon of manufacturing comes in there. Now all these are all eliminated and these are available real time. Uh, when we say real time, we have actually like uh, synced it up with mobile wherein you can get messages if the machine has stopped beyond 15 minutes. So it automatically goes to a maintenance guy. They get an alert saying that machine has stopped working. So uh, the core is getting the data which is hard, you know, which does that work. So when I say data, what data you need to collect is what is very, 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 very critical and how to collect is which sensor you need to use. So once these are all clearly identified, then it's all like a front end applications that like you have a lot of tools to do that. But the core is understanding the sensor, which will work in the industrial scenario. As he was mentioning like four sensor, mind you, it lasted just for five strokes. A machine producing at the rate of 105 pieces per minute. It lasted five strokes. It came out of like a thin paper. That's it. Four sensor. What we use for Arduino testing. So uh, we have tested with uh, probably close to 10 to 12 sensors in various industrial scenes. Literally, like it will be as good as having drenched in oil when you take the sensor out. So uh, this sensor is capable of withstanding that. See, uh, we've got the easiest of the sensors because it is easy to do a demonstration. Uh, the sensor we are actually using is uh, something based on energy, power and energy. Uh, we tried using current, one of the, if you notice towards the end of the video, now we have used a long tester which would have put it on the you know, direct main line itself. Uh, with the current what happens is, uh, it spikes when, uh, when you switch on and switch off. It's a basic principle. So what happens is every time a spike happens, you know, the count goes up by one. Actually, a part is not produced. It's just started the machine. So what happens is, so the thing is, only when you measure energy or when you measure uh, power, uh, you know, energy is nothing but integration of uh, power over time. Now, unless you do it, you will not be able to get the accurate parts or no accurate count of the part. Uh, see, for a company which is producing something like as I said, you know, 100 parts per minute, uh, even if the accuracy goes by even say by 0.1 percent. It's like you're talking about a missing of thousand parts in a ship. It's huge for a company, you know. Uh, they can't let thousand parts go on a phone. So everyone looks at you know, increasing the uh, uh, accuracy of the count. Because once your count, your data source data is right, then your all your analysis will be perfect. Or not be meaningful for you. If you know, the problem in most of the companies where we are you know, big companies we are talking to, or we are you know, we have done the demos, they use SAP to monitor. Right. But the problem for them is everything you know, is currently filled in you know, uh, sheets, paper, and then given to the SAP operations team who actually enter it into the SAP. Right? So scope for data error is huge. Now that's the whole point we are trying to you know, eliminate as part of this entire supply chain where you know, data moves seamlessly from you know, machine, uh, machine to onto your uh, you know, ERP itself directly. Uh, so the integration between SAP and uh, you know, what we are doing 
so they just give us you know uh, fields that they want into the SAP and we just give them a CSV file which they load into using a you know, batch program. So that's how it works. Uh, but anyway, next time if you do another session like this, we'll probably bring that energy sensor also in show. Okay, this is one application where we are trying to link this. Okay, you can see these are all stoppages which are based on TPM. TPM is a world standard and they have listed out 60 major losses. So for a particular company, we have identified these are the losses that are applicable for them. So now, uh, what we are collecting is just the production count. How do we know what is a stoppage? Definition of production has to be defined. Definition of stoppage has to be defined. Here, like what we have used is, if the gap timestamp difference between two production data is more than five minutes, then it is a stoppage. So, so we have some sample data collected and uh, available now. See, again, these are all only front end. Ultimate core is like what you collect here. This is what is critical. This is collected from Arduino using that sensor. Without this, like Raspberry Pi or anything is meaningless. Can you just highlight a little bit on why the conversation we had earlier in the week about why you use Arduino's for the sensors, not the Raspberry Pi, the, the sensitivity of the sensor. Okay. So, uh, Wait, see, uh, how many of you know uh, that Arduino and Pi are 10 bit resolution? What? That's the ADC. ADC. Yeah. Analog to digital, the 10 bit resolution. <laughs> Some of the sensors that we use are 24 bit resolution. <laughs> that means you magnify the data. So, you know, with a uh, 10 bit resolution, it's like, you know, it's four digits you get. Uh, with a 24 bit resolution, you get more number of digits to analyze your uh, data. Uh, it's like some parts like, you know, I'm not sure, uh, when you take a screw, it has threads. There are yeah. certain operations where do, they do re-threading, where they remove all the, you know, clean all if there's any, you know, extension from the dust or something. So the force is very, very minimal. For the sensor to measure, you know, it requires a higher ADC. So, hence we had to, you know, move away from Arduino and, you know, put another ADC uh, to actually get a 16-bit ADC. From 24 bit, we were, the best we could do was 16 bit ABC. And uh, that's how we were being able to capture the resolution. That's why I used the pick. Yeah. So now we're moving to the pick to actually do it. See, you use any microcontroller, you know, it has a limitation in terms of ABC. So what you may have to do is you have to put an external AD, ADS or ADC. Uh, so now we're working on one version where we're putting ADS uh, 2415 for uh, directly with the Raspberry Pi. So if you work MCP 3008 is another one, but that is once again a 10-bit resolution. So these are challenges you will see on the ground. You may not notice it now, but when you start getting in deeper into this measurement. Uh, so we work with few companies who are, uh, you know, who have some 30 years experience in measurements, you know, who develop sensors for measurements. Uh, so that's where, you know, it gets a lot more tricky because measurement is a separate field in itself. You, know, you and I just cannot get into it, you know, uh, by reading up, you know, or going to YouTube videos for one month or something. So the people spend, you know, PhD spend their entire uh, uh, life on that. Uh, so one of our advisors for our company is a gentleman, L. R. Subramanian. He is an ex. He is currently uh, uh, who is the founder of one uh, CTO you know, power measurements, and these guys are supplying for nuclear power corporation. Uh, so unless or until you cut, make the cut, you, know, you cannot uh, supply components or parts to Indian nuclear power corporation. So he's uh, he's also a professor at uh, IIT Bombay. And uh, his specialization is on measurements. So uh, he's one advising us. Now, just on one part in terms of the UI, okay, uh, the reason why the UI is like this was you now they, uh, this one of the customers, panel. yeah. Yeah, this panel is going to be on the machine. There is no user entry here. All that they are going to do is just press the button. Obviously, it's not a touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it is like I just press it here. Sorry, I can't see it. Uh, okay, the company, uh, they initially, Got the project done by uh, MNC, and uh, it is probably one of the top MNCs. Now the challenge they had was they gave them a very small UI where they had to press buttons, and the operators were not comfortable pressing the smaller UI. And uh, hence, you know, they asked us to come out with a user interface which was, you know, on a 17-inch monitor, you know, it's big enough for the operators to understand and play. So this UI it could be in Tamil, it could be in Telugu, it could be in any local language. So it's easy for the operator to understand. You know, the operator only knows to you know, either stop, start a button or stop a button. 
So he understands the button language. Uh, if you give him a complex UI and tell him, you know, there's this combination of buttons, you know, he will tell him, I'll probably look for another company. So that is how it is. So broadly, yeah. the next version, what we are working on is once the machine has stopped and it is beyond that five minutes, unless otherwise he enters the reason, he cannot start the machine again, which means we are going to add some more circuit to the Arduino, which will power up the machine. The, it's not, just don't imagine like 5 volt is going to run a 440 volt uh, motor. Obviously, we will be using some uh, relays. switches, relays in, in between, which would uh, take the input, digital input into the system and then uh, power up the line for the uh, main motor. So, that's the another uh, thing we are using. But having said this, the users are like empty. It is up to its mind blowing. So, uh, imagine like in big machines, the video that you saw, it was actually a two tier machine and uh, that's a 150 horsepower motor so uh, it's uh, the cable itself like it's this big like not what we see at home so uh, the tong tested like why we had used the clamp specifically because that uh, wire can pass through that otherwise we didn't have any your all the like sensor what we read in this those cannot pass through that it's big so we need to customize that so we thought like this was one ready available option and other biggest challenges like cost. They would straight away compare it with the counter. A counter would cost like a digital counter or an electronic counter would be around 6,000, 7,000. So in what way are we going to be different from them? What is the additional value that we are going to give them? So in one of the companies, what we are actually doing is we are effectively saving them 15 minutes per shift per hour on per man day for a shift for a machine. So effectively, he is going to gain something like 45 minutes in a day for a machine. So that's the saving they get, like, which means technically they are going to get close to 20-25 days additional production hours. And apart from that, you would have all heard of this TDS. So this is TDC, rather data collected at source. So uh, it is really like you are you cannot mess up with this data. Nobody can say like uh, I have not produced this has not happened. Uh, in fact, we are seeing like a lot of live mails being exchanged because one of our demo devices at one plant running in Pune and there are issues like uh, production made in the second shift, transfer to third shift, not recorded in the second shift. All these are all getting highlighted. Machines not running from certain hours in the night. It's all getting recorded. So this, but our objective is not that. Our objective is like uh, digitization in the shop floor for SMEs. We are, that's our uh, core and focus area and we are using simple Arduino circuits and now like uh, we are moving to PIC and uh, Raspberry Pi. How do you really validate the data? What are the data you have generated? This? Okay. Uh, one is physical sorry. measurement. You produce for one hour and you collect the data for one hour. Compare the uh, output. That's the only method. Even weighing machine is uh, dubious because they also give only like 99% testing of hypothesis that will be this kind of error, everything they will give. So, like what we said, when it spikes up on down, right? Yeah, that is the correct. Uh -huh. that's correct. So, what we do is we sensor. write the program to okay. take into account about all these uh, variations. So, just one. Uh, see, uh, the <coughs> you know, industrial IoT, you've got to do umpteen amount of trials to know what is the right thing. So, for us, that's why we moved out of current sensor, we moved to energy and power and uh, proximity. See, sometimes you can use a combination of proximity and energy sensor to, uh, based on the uh, accuracy that you require. Uh, in terms of uh, measurement uh, at the factory site, I don't know whether the right count is produced or not, the physical measurement is the only known measurement which is still enough. Because that is my next question. Yes. Your sensor, water sensor, so you will be you know, waiting for some triggers to happen, say, if this is produced, right? Hmm. What happens if it just triggers and it did not produce? Uh, such situations will not happen. Uh, there is no material to produce or no, no, no. it just... Uh, uh, see, okay. further what happens is... The, okay, uh, I'll come to you. That's that. where no. we have this energy sensor. Okay. Uh, machine, uh, okay, you need to understand... Uh, the machine dynamics. Machine, the jargons in manufacturing. There is something called as idle run, ideal run. Idle run is machine is running, no component is produced. Ideal run is machine is running and the component is produced. When I say component is produced, it is at the set rate for which the machine is set for. 
So we, from this we measure at a, we arrive at a metric called as OPE, operational efficiency. So it is a step below what is called as OEE, overall equipment effectiveness. So concept of efficiency, productivity, all these are all gone. We are measuring something called as effectiveness. How effective is the asset, the machine that you've got in the shop floor. So here the basic data what we are measuring is component is produced or not. That's a definition which needs to be understood and given commonly agreed with the manager. So okay, he was it depends on the kind of accuracy the customers are looking at. See, some customers don't want to pay a given. See, energy sensors are expensive, it's not that good. So some customers say, uh, the objective of the customer, some customers if they want accurate count plus right analysis, they are willing to pay. So within our seg market segment, we have got some customers who are willing to pay for a solution. Say, uh, someone who's got a mechanical counter today, uh, which just only does the counting, uh, they are willing to go for a proximity sensor with the solution. Uh, so some of them, you know, want, like what he said, you know, the company we are talking, they are doing uh, in Pune, now they are a um, public listed company and uh, they are, you know, for them data, you know, source data they want to get it right. So they are willing to pay. So uh, based on that you actually you know, modify your solution accordingly. See, you know, in a way the way we put it, we are, not, um, uh, we are not a company which is going to be focused on mass production of our product. Uh, we are like you know, people who assemble bikes for you. Uh, whatever is your problem, we will solve your problem and we will get the right solution fit for your problem. So that is the... How much of manual influence is required? Suppose I take one or two certified from the CM along to the MES. And then what will be the... Okay. For example. So how much of manual influence is required? Okay. First we need to understand what is the manufacturing setup we are talking of. Is it a single piece flow or a multi piece flow? When we say single piece flow, it's like you are talking of assembly of engines. Or assembly of vehicles. If it is a multi-piece flow, that is like uh, what we are seeing is like uh, 105 pieces per minute. Engines are not produced that way, at best like 105 per hour. Yeah, probably 2000 cars come out of Hyundai per shift. Okay, so now we are talking so here, the basic understanding is what is meant by production. Though it might sound uh, like uh, probably people even ridicule it, but it has to be clearly defined and understood. What is meant by production? What is meant by stoppages? And then what is meant by machine being switched on and switched off? All these definitions have to be clearly defined. When I say machine is switched off, is the coolant motor which is at the bottom, which is uh, supplying coolant for one of the tool, is that to be switched off? Is that meant by switch off? So, so I, I, you know, in the beginning I said, you know, having domain knowledge is very, very important. <coughs> because you need to understand you know, uh, the definitions of what it means before you actually you know, uh, proceed. And uh, there are certain machines where Unless you fit a component, it will not produce. Now, it fit the material. So, if the raw material is not fit in, it will not produce. It will not even start. So, uh, machines are tuned that way. So, uh, that's what, you know, it's, it's a whole complex, I mean. So, how much of, I, I went to solutions. So okay. How much of automation you can achieve? So, start, like, the complete integration. Integration. 
But if your integration is cool, then you know, uh, it, it's easy. We actually have a, we actually have a customer uh, interestingly uh, who's got startup to monitor you know, a process oh, called awesome. treatment. He still wants a solution outside of it to help him track the material movement. So we we uh, we actually actually we, as a company we have three solutions. One is we do material movement and tracking within a company uh, within the shop. Floor. We do ERP and we do what is called as M to ERP, machine to ERP. So these are the three solutions we have. Right? That's for it. So we understand whatever you are actually saying because we have it in house. And uh, see the thing is for us uh, while we can do all this, uh, you no. Know, Monitoring this is the biggest uh, focus for us because you're doing remote monitoring for say 20 installations or 30 installations and uh, now they'll just call up you know, the supervisor and say sir this is not working. He'll not say the, so what is the issue? <laughs> He'll just say it's not working. See the biggest challenge I'll tell you like all these devices circuits being there, most critical factor is how reliable are these devices. You might plug in and play like at home it will all work. Uh, in the industrial scenario you just plug and play it will run for some time, it will stop for some time, it will not collect data, uh, your uh, serial port would have got uh, blocked, data will not be flowing, you might have to reboot the serial port or like you might have to reboot the entire system. So all these challenges uh, we are also learning. So it is like uh, being hands on is, to, in the industrial level it's totally oh, different. Uh, don't worry. Uh, see, no, it's actually okay. Now we have written a script. No, now we have written a script where like we restarted every day when the machine is not running. Oh, okay. okay, one more thing. See, in terms of communication, very interesting. And those of you who are really interested in Arduino. See, uh, serial port communication is one. Uh, but in our experience, it's not very reliable. It will increase 98% reliability. I2C, we are now testing it really well on the ground and SPL. So, three. So we've uh, explored all. We are currently exploring all three types of communications with the devices. Uh, so this is one thing probably you now. See the whole point over here is you now with an Arduino you can still build an industrial grade application. It is possible. So that is the thing that we want to leave the message over here. And uh, yeah, see we are also going through the entire uh, phase of yeah, the challenge is like making it industry ready. See the other point is see. Uh, when you buy Arduino board from a shop, say any electronic shop, there is no warranty or guarantee. Right? When you build a product, the customer expects a warranty or a guarantee for one year. Right? Minimum. So, any electronic you know, components that you buy, you know, there is no guarantee, but you are supposed to give a guarantee <laughs> with an so, product okay. along with the solution. One of the biggest learning is like, what is the cable we should use for powering up the Arduino? What is the adapter specifications? And then when you use the serial port communication, which cable actually really fits in? Like when you buy a kit, they give with this uh, dark blue or a black cable, which invariably never works in the industrial scenario. <laughs> so you uh, just to arrive at those cables, it took us time. Maybe send us a list of all the recommended parts. Oh, basic and, and, mistake. And the Arduino. Like buy. All right, AliExpress is the best. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Don't buy it on Amazon. You get it almost like Basic Arduino to differentiate between good and bad one. Uh, any Arduino, you take it and look at the reverse. There has to be two colors. If it's a single color, it's gone. Like it's not an original Arduino. See, yeah, the dark green, black say one color. Yeah, blue and white. If it is single color, it's. See, you don't know all this uh, when you are doing it. Uh, when you buy Arduino for 440 rupees, you know all about it. <laughs> but it's actually not the right one. <laughs> so, yeah. Three last questions. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, see, first we need to understand what is the solution. Uh, what is the business problem we are trying to solve? Yeah. No, no, no. What is the timeline? The timeline for to make a circuit. So oh, for us, now we basically need uh, probably one week or two weeks because we are not keeping an inventory of the parts. If we keep the inventory of the parts, it's for us uh, probably you know, two days job. Huh? Pardon? Yeah, it is in CSV and we also actually moved to database also. So uh, why we are using Raspberry Pi is basically that's a... Uh, uh, I'm not also too sure. Live. It is running. Oh, we need internet. 
ಯಾವ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್
taxing it to them. There's no cloud connectivity here, it's all on site. The data is being stored permanently on the pipe, on the cloud, cycled through there. So we are not getting into the cloud business at all. Because some customers don't, you know, in the interest of data security, they don't want to move the cloud yet. This we are doing for monitoring the machines. It's more of a back office monitoring kind of thing rather than a customer. So this is yeah. 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 like yeah. a team view. Pretty much, but this is like a exchange based on machine. It could just be running. Okay. So each machine is uniquely identified by you know, the PI ID. Because each packet is also used as a user. Power issue, huh? Because again, you come back. No, the biggest challenge is you don't have any remote desktop applications, straightforward applications for Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Within the LAN, yes, you have like See, we have uh, you know, for Linux based uh, operating systems, we've tried, uh, uh, we've tried options, but we've not been successful so far to connect outside of networks. Team viewer is, team viewer is giving you beta version for Raspberry Pi. Terminalify is another one. You got, let's see, reliability is very low. You cannot use type VNC. Sorry? So only the data reliability is only about you. No, see, data reliability is okay. See, data is there in the file. So there is no issue on reliability of the data. If you are referring to reliability, accessing over internet, currently it's something you are trying to work on, you know, work on an effective solution. Data is the same perfect data, there is no issue for us. So you can ever access the file, then we can do it. Sure. Any more questions we can take it offline. Thank you very much and good luck with your audio workshop.